Hello everyone, we will continue the topic Webdyne Pro App App and in the previous videos, we started with ALV as a part of component usage. So firstly, we understood the inbuilt features of ALV in one Webdyne Pro application. Then after that, we took a requirement. We started with the practical part. We created a Web10 Pro component. In that component, we simply designed the layout. We have the label, input field. We have the submit button. And we created one view container UI element. What is this? It is just like a area. In that area, we will display the another view. And we can say another view means we will simply display the ALV table. And it is extremely important question from the interview perspective. If any interviewer asks how you displayed the ALV, the first answer is we created a view, view, view container UI element because in that it is simply, simply, it is a container for the view. It means in this we can display the another view or we can say in our topic, we will display the ALV table. Now we will proceed with the logic part. Now you all know, whenever user will give the input and click on the submit button, we need to fetch the data from VBAK and VBAP table. And we need to display that data in the form of ALV. Now, firstly, what we will do, we'll finish with the logic part and then I will come on to the remaining steps. How we will bind that data into this view container UI element. That part, we will do it later. So firstly, we will write the logic. Now, you all know we are going for an output of seven columns. Four columns from VBAK table three columns from VBAP table. So firstly, what I will do, I will create a node. That node has seven attributes, four from the VBAK table and three from the VBAP table. So firstly, I will create a node. I will go to component controller and I will create a node in the context of component controller. I will simply right click I will go for create node. Suppose I will give the name of the node as output. Now again, most important part. Yes, we have the ALV output. It means we can have any number of records. By default, cardinality is one is to one. One is to one means minimum one record, maximum one record. But we can have maximum any number of record and minimum it can be zero also. It is depends upon the requirement. If you are saying no, minimum one record will be there, then you can go for one is to n. If you are saying no, minimum can be zero also, then you can go for zero is to n. When we displayed the data in the form of table, at that time also we change the cardinality to zero is to n. Now you will know the topic. So at the first level itself, we can change the cardinality. So just go for cardinality, 0 is to n or 1 is to n, it totally your wish depends upon the requirement. Now we will simply go for OK. Now into this particular node, we will create seven attributes. Now it is totally your wish. You want to create one by one or you want to use the feature attributes from the component of structure. So we will use attributes from the components of structure. I will right click, create using the wizard attributes from components of structure. So firstly, I will go for VBAK, then I will put VBAP, VBAK. We will take four attributes, VBELN, ERDAT, ERZDT, ERNAP. We'll go for OK. Now I will simply, simply go for now this VBAP. Right click on the same node. Now we will go for create using the wizard attributes from the components of structure. 
Now I will put VBAP. Now from VBAP, but we want, suppose I will go for postnar, matinar, and we have a column also, yes, NETWR. We'll check that call and ETWR. We'll go for OK. Now you will be able to see seven columns. We have seven columns. You can go one by one also. It is totally your wish. But do not forget to change the cardinality for zeros to n because it is our output. This node is for the output which has seven attributes and we have multiple rows. Yes. So cardinality must be zero is to n. Now I will simply go to the view. I will go for yes and we can drag, we drag and drop the node to the view also. I will go to context. Now I will simply, simply go to context. And we will drag and drop the node output. I will again do that. Now we will go for the logic part. You all know whenever user will click on the submit button, we need to fetch the data from VBAK, VBAP, and we will bind that data with this particular node. So what we will do, I will simply click on the submit button. As of now, this button is disabled. If you want to make it unable, we'll simply create a action. I will click on to create button. Suppose my name of the action is display. I will give the description to display the sales order details. I will go for OK. Now, after going for this action, you all know system will create a event handler method. You can see we have a event handler method. And you can see we have a action also. I will change it to S. So we have a action and we have a event handler method. Now into this event handler method, we need to go for the logic part. What we want to do. Firstly, we will get the sales order number. Based upon that sales order number, whatever user is passing, we will fetch the data from VBAK, VBAP. And we will bind with the node which has seven columns. So firstly, we will go for this web and pro code wizard. You all know there is no need to write the logic manually. I will read which particular attribute VBELN because there we are passing the value of sales order number. I will go to context. This is our input attribute. We'll go for OK. Now I will simply, simply remove the commented code. Now into this particular variable, we have the value of sales order number. Now based upon this input, we need to fetch the data from VBAK and VBAP. And from the first level itself, we are discussing, we are never writing the selection logic in the web and pro component. We always, always have to take the help of assistance class. So I will simply, simply create a assistance class. You can use the existing assistance class also. No problem. It is totally your wish. Suppose if I will double click on to web 10 pro component, I will go for yes. Now I will give some name to the assistance class. It is good to create from here itself because name of the super class will automatically appear. If you are creating through SC24, you need to pass the name of the super class manually. Suppose my name of the super class, name of the assistance class is Z assist. Suppose I will give underscore ALV underscore sales. I will go for double click. Yes, I want to create the class. I will go for local object. Now you will be able to see the name of the super class will automatically appear. 
you can see the name of the super class is automatically coming. Now the methods are automatically into our subclass. This is our subclass only. Whatever the public and protected methods are there, it's automatically coming. Now I will create one method here. Suppose my name of the method is get underscore data. Instance method, public method. I will give the description to get the sales order details. Now I will simply, simply go for input and output parameter. What is the input to this method? Sales order number. What is output? Output will be of seven columns, but seven not individual column. Seven columns is in the form of internal table. So firstly, I will go for input. Our input is single sales order number. So I will simply write PBBELN. It is our input. What is the data element for VBELN? It is VBELN underscore VA. Our output, our output is an internal table. They are not single, single fields. So whenever you want an internal table, how you are writing? Internal table, type table of structure. But here, I cannot create a structure through type statement. There is no provision to write the code here. You all know in that case, you need to simply, simply create a global structure. So now I will go for global structure. I will go to SC11 transaction code. Suppose I will write ZSTR ALV underscore sales. Everywhere I am using ALV word so that there will not be any duplicacy. Yes. Anyway, system will not allow to get any duplicate. I will go for structure. Suppose I will write sales structure. Now I will go for seven columns. You can take four columns from VBAK and three columns from VBAP. We'll simply copy paste. This is our VBAK. How you can copy multiple things? Control Y is for Yang. This symbol will come. Just scroll. Just select Control C, Control V. Now I will again do Control Y, Control C, Control V. So this is the way how you can do. Now I will copy from VBAP. I will go for database table. Now we will copy this Postnar and Matena. All these two are together. Postnar, Matena. And this is the data element. Control Y. Control C. Control V. Now last column is NETWR. We will manually we will find that this is NETW. And this is the data element. Now for amount field, we always need to pass the reference table and reference field. In our current structure, there is no reference table and reference. There is no reference field. Now you can take here also. It's totally your wish. But anyways, we are not displaying in the output. So we will, but we will do, I will simply pass from the VBAP itself. I'll just check in VBAP table, we'll pass. If you are taking WAERK column in the same structure, then you can pass the reference of the same structure itself. Anyways, this, this thing also we did so many times. I will activate the structure. Yes, it is syntactically correct. Now the structure is activated. Now, this is the structure. If I will go to class method, suppose if I am writing T output. Here, I this is our output. So I will go for exporting. Here, I cannot go for type table of. Suppose if I am writing type table of structure name, how you are going for internal table? internal table type table of structure so rather than local structure you have the global structure but 
system will not accept type table of you all know whenever type table of is not accepting you need to go for table type so i will create a table type also i'll just put the t in the name create i will go for table type now here i will pass the name of the structure so my table type is activated. Now I will simply pass the name of the table type. So internal table type table type. I just put T here. Now I will simply activate the class. I will activate up to this level, whatever I created. So assistance class is activated. Now I will simply go to display mode and I will activate other parts also. So it is activating component controller, main view. Yes, everything is active. So what is the summary of this particular video? Now in this video, what we need to do, we are going for the logic part first. Okay. Now we want a output of seven columns. It means we need to go for it. We need to go for seven attributes. So what I did in the component controller, I created a node which has seven columns, seven attributes. Now do not forget to change the cardinality for zero to n or one is to n. It is totally your requirement based because ELB can go for maximum any number of records. After that, on the submit button, I created the action. Whenever you are going for action, you will be able to see action into actions tab. And in the method tab, you will be able to see the event handler method. In that event handler method, we are going for getting the value of sales document number. We simply used Web10 Pro Core Wizard. After that, we are not supposed to write the selection logic in the Web10 Pro component directly. It should be in the assistance class. So I simply created the assistance class. Whenever you are going from here itself, the name of the super class automatically appears. So after that, I simply created the method into that. Our input is sales order number, but output is an internal table. Here, I do not have a provision to write type statement. So I created the structure using SC11. Here, I cannot go for type table. So I simply created the table type. Now, in the next video, we will write the logic into this method. We will call the assistance class method in our Web10 Pro component. Then we will proceed forward with the further steps. So that's it in this video. Thank you.